Good morning, everyone. Dr. Vicki Harris speaking to you from the Seeds of Transformation Healing Center. It is Thursday, March 23rd, and the moon is in Sag. The moon moved into Sag at 4.25 a.m. this morning. Um, five minutes after that, Venus conjoined Jupiter in um, Taurus. And then just uh, at 5.51 this morning, Venus sextiled Neptune. Um, we have a full moon at 9.53 this morning in Sag. Shortly thereafter, Venus moves into Gemini. And then um, we have Jupiter sextile Neptune. What does all that mean? Uh, well, I'll go through it. But uh, what are you looking at? Uh, you're looking at storm clouds. Uh, yep. You're looking at storm clouds above the house. Um, and as I was standing here uh, getting my thoughts together, I could hear the, the rumbling of distant thunder. Yes. So <laughs> that's what's going on <laughs> here. There is a storm brewing. There is a storm brewing. So a couple of things. Um, Let's talk, we'll go one by one as to the things that are, well, actually, let me just talk about the full moon first, and then I'll talk about the stuff that happens before and after the full moon. Okay, so full moons are always points of awareness. Um, it is a time of observation. It's a time of listening. And what do we need to listen to? Well, <laughs> we need to, uh, of course, listen to our own intuition about things. The full moon is in Sag. Sag is a fire sign. Um, uh, the moon is our feelings, how we respond. And in Sagittarius, we can respond in any number of ways. Sagittarius, in its, in its positive sense, can be very broad-minded, could look at something as trying to extract meaning from an experience. In Sagittarius, we come to we come to a sense of meaning through our experiences. We have to remember that Sag is the sign after Scorpio. And in order to get to Sag, you have to go through Scorpio. And Scorpio is working with the shadow. Scorpio is working with the underworld and those things that lie deep beneath us. The things that in a way make us very human um, and also divine because Scorpio is the sign associated with our soul and our need to surrender to something greater than ourself, right? That's Scorpio. Then Sagittarius on the other side of that comes out of the underworld passages back into the light and says, this has been my experience and this is the meaning of that. The sun in conversant discerning Gemini is asking us to look at the facts, right? Illuminating the facts. So we're illuminating the facts. We're, we're, we're coming to a sense of what has this been about? Okay. Now we could take it from, we can take it in a very broad uh, experience, right? We could look at it from the perspective of um, the world, or we can look at it from the perspective of our own personal journey, right? The macrocosm and the microcosm. If you want a good look at this full moon, uh, you can check out my astrology of the last two weeks of May. I talk about, the, did I say new moon, full moon? I talk about this full moon in that. And also on Ona's channel, we did a moonshine episode. Uh, I thought it was great. It was a great episode. Um, and we talk about uh, the different energies and the like. So you can check that out on her channel. Uh, that was just put out, I think, yesterday, the day before. I want to point out that at the top of that tree is uh, some wisteria flowers. Oh, hi there. That was a bird. Another bird flying by. <laughs> anyway, um, this is also part of the lunation cycle that began with that new moon in Taurus, right? The new moon in Taurus, which was very powerful. 
and 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 very potent now <clears throat> let's go to what happens before what happened while we were sleeping pretty much or while I was sleeping I don't know maybe other people weren't sleeping I was I really slept like the dead last night but I made I made myself I prepared myself to do that because I really needed the rest anyway um, at 4.30 this morning here on the East Coast, we had a conjunction of Venus and Jupiter in the sign of Taurus. Venus is the ruling planet of Taurus. So Venus is powerful in Taurus. And Jupiter is an energy of expansion. Taurus is about our values. What's important to us, right? What is essential in our lives? Taurus is an archetype of life right? The opposite sign, Scorpio, is an archetype of death and rebirth, okay? So this conjunctions are always starting points where the energy of whatever two planets are there are combining and creating a powerful alliance. Now, sometimes the planets aren't all that aligned to start with, right? You have a conjunction between a planet like Uranus or like Saturn, which is about structure, and Uranus, which is about blowing up structure. They're not happy bedfellows together. <laughs> they just not. It's it's really like the odd couple. Only there's a lot of explosions and stuff, right? Um, and and breaking down and making up rules and no no that stuff. That's that that's not what's happening now. Just giving that as an example. But Venus and Jupiter are considered benefics. Jupiter, the greater benefic, beneficial energy, and Venus, the lesser benefic. Venus, the planet of love, right? Venus, the planet of relationship. Venus, the planet of values. Valuing our interconnectedness. Valuing uh, our resources, right? It, there's a lot of there's a lot of things about resources. Plus, we have to remember that it is in Taurus. Taurus is a fixed earth sign. So we're talking about land resources, okay? We have a conjunction between these two planets, and it's a beautiful energy, okay? It's a beautiful energy, and it's aiding. It's aiding us. Five minutes after that, Venus moves on a little further and makes a trine to Neptune. Venus and Neptune have a special relationship. Did I say trine? I meant sextile. Sorry, guys. Uh, Venus makes a sextile to Neptune. Neptune is the higher octave of Venus. Venus is the planet of love. Neptune is the higher octave of that compassion. Be, you know, love brought to its highest expression. Compassion. Neptune is in Pisces, the sign that it rules. Venus is in Taurus, the sign that it rules. When you're in a sign, when a planet is in a sign that it rules, it's powerful. Now, the energy of the, the relationship between them, the sextile. The sextile is what we call a waning. Is it waning? Hold on one second. It could be waxing is a waxing sextile. It's about opening the lines of communication. It's about gathering the facts, okay? And um, it's about compassion, talking about things with a compassionate heart. And then we have the full moon. And then Venus continues to move on, she's very busy today, and goes from the, the Taurus, in which she is the ruler of, of, the, of Taurus. Um, she likes being in Taurus. She, it's, it's great energy. She moves into Gemini. Now, sometimes people think that Venus is fickle in Gemini, <laughs> which she can be. You know, everything, there's always something better on the other side of the, right? The, what is it? The grass is always greener on the other side of the septic or whatever that is, that old uh, Irma Bombeck thing. Uh, true observation, as it were. But um, 
in esoter esoteric astrology, Venus is uh, is is the ruler uh, of Gemini. Interestingly enough, that's esoteric, hidden truth and the like. Gemini is connected to the lover's card. And of course, Venus is connected to love. But Venus is also, or Gemini, is about choice. The choices that we make. We have a great example of Gemini and choices that are made uh, when we watch the choices that are made by the ex-president who has uh, Sun in Gemini, North Node in Gemini, and Uranus, the chaos maker, as it were, the haymaker uh, in Gemini. And so we can see how choices determine fate here, or we will see that, by the way. Uh, maybe not today, but we will see it. Okay, so Venus is now in Gemini. And Gemini, did you hear that was thunder? I'll try not to stand under any too tall trees here. <laughs> I'll, I'll stand under the, this, this, the, uh, this tree will protect me, right? All right. Um, so Venus and Gemini, Venus is what we love, what we value. Gemini is communication. It's time to talk to each other and it's time to listen. Listen and then speak. Share, listen, talk about it. Talk it over. Let's talk it over. And then tonight, later tonight, 5.44 p.m. here on the East Coast, and I will show you the house from this angle with the impending storm coming down. Oh, here we go. Looks like we're going to might get some lightning. Um, we, have ne oh, we have Jupiter making a sextile to Neptune. Now, of all the things that happened today, these are things that happen regularly. Venus and Jupiter get together every year. Uh, Venus will make two sextiles to Neptune every year, a waxing and a waning. The, the, the full moon happens every month. Venus moves into Gemini every year. So those are sort of yearly cycles. They're all sort of coalescing together at this important time. But the Jupiter... Neptune sextile uh, is part of a synodic cycle that runs about 14 years. And every 14 years or so, Jupiter and Neptune come together and then they separate and Jupiter moves faster than Neptune. So Jupiter moves away from Neptune and creates these aspects. And so there's a conversation happening between Jupiter and Neptune. Both Jupiter and Neptune are expansive energies and it's about the expansion of consciousness. The last conjunction of these two planets was in 2022, right around the time that the Ukraine was invaded for the second time, actually, when they actually went in to try to go into Kiev. Right? 2022. That conjunction occurred in Pisces. Now, what's interesting about that is both Jupiter and Neptune rule Pisces. Jupiter is the classical ruler of Pisces and Neptune is the um, modern ruler of Pisces. They're both expansive and they were in Pisces. Pisces is an energy of dissolution, dissolution, dissolving away the boundaries, expanding our consciousness, expanding our awareness. And of course, if we're dealing with Pisces, we're dealing with issues of compassion, okay? So humanitarian, emotionally humanitarian, it's not just the idea of humanitarianism, which is a, more of an Aquarius thing, but it's an actual like living in the heart of compassion. And so we have a sextile between those two planets that had conjoined, what, two years ago, and sex house open the lines of communication. Opening the lines of communication for the need for compassion, for love, for humanitarian, to be human, to open our hearts to each other. Okay? So this is part of the meaning that we can glean from this day. So it's an important energy. 
because this new moon is occurring at such early, I mean, a full moon is occurring at such early degrees of Sag, the Sag energy is going to stay around for a while, a couple of days. And so we have a couple of days to sort of mull this stuff over. And uh, mull we shall. The wisteria growing and the storm impending. So that's what I want to say. Big day today. I hope you're enjoying the view as I am uh, <laughs> walking through the garden before the storm hits. And you know, it's funny because uh, this looks really ominous, but we don't always get these storms. There's something about the way the land is here uh, and, the, and the ocean, how it's like a little bit of a cove, that sometimes the storms pass over us without actually hitting us. So I'm not sure this one is going to hit, but it looks pretty ominous. And it sounds pretty ominous. So in the last few minutes, let's look at, let's see what has, what has bloomed. We have another iris here. There's a couple of irises back there that have to bloom. Um, we have these here. This is lovely. The dianthus is coming up. That's always lovely as well. There we go, some more irises. And the roses um, have, been, have been budding, but I don't think anything's open yet. It's a little too soon. We had a beautiful day yesterday, so a lot of things came up and out. Because it was warm, finally, <laughs> uh, and the like. And there's our beautiful bleeding heart. And everything is, 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 is starting to fill in. These are our roses. The hydrangeas are starting to leaf out. Hopefully we get some flowers this year. I think we will. This is, I think, the Seal of Solomon. The um, hummingbirds love this stuff. And, uh, yeah, so that's what's going on, guys. More and more things blooming. And... Uh, a beautiful, beautiful spring. Here's our, our favorite, Wisteria. Over the door. And then we have it moving over here. And there. And all the way up there. <laughs> and up there as well. I don't know if you can see that. Let me try to get you a better view of this. I don't know. It's kind of hard to see because of the sun. But it's up there. So that's what's going on, folks. It is a potent day. Punctuated by thunder. Have yourself a wonderful one. Um, sit back, observe, watch what's going on. Come to an understanding for yourself. And then we have an opportunity to share our understandings with each other. Much love, everyone. Namaste.